Welcome to the Firearms Insider Gun and Gear Review Podcast, episode 221. On this show, we showcase gun reviews, gear, and anything else the gun enthusiast may be looking for. We strive to evaluate products from an unbiased and honest perspective. I'm your host, Chad Wallace, from the Firearms Radio Network, your source for broadcasts for shooters, hunters, and all things firearms related. In this show, we'll be discussing the Brownells Retros, 1911 for Zane, and a Taurus for Tony. So tonight on the podcast, we have Tony, Zane, and Rob is back. Uh, what did you guys do in guns this week? Anyone? I'll, I'll I go had first. A okay, go ahead. Yeah, I'll go first because Tony's was probably way more elaborate than what I did. <laughs> probably. Um, <laughs> since if you if you follow him on any of the interwebs, you've probably seen what he's been up to. I um, I went hunting for piggies and i took the uh nine millimeter ar pistol and uh the pcp uh you know because i got to see how well rounded the thing is you know i'm giving it a fair shake and uh so i went hunting with it it was it was a good time i i sent a few hogs to meet jesus and um there's some people that are yeah well how do you know that because i don't (laughs) think because pork's not kosher (laughs) <laughs> oh my goodness um now uh, uh no not not too big about uh 100 pounds 120 pounds you know right right in that okay, you know, Carter, size. that's a huge right. hog hey no <laughs> i've shot some huge monsters out here but but yeah so that's cool some people are going to be eating good uh this week i don't eat them but i i, I donate the meat to people because i don't, don't like killing things them? No, I don't eat them. I, if I want pork, I'll go to the store and buy pork chops. But Dude, okay. seriously, there's no better pork than freaking fresh hog. Yeah. Eh. Why don't you eh. just send it my way? Keep it refrigerated, I'll, though. I, oh, I, I, I will send you some next next time I uh, next time I get one. <laughs> I, will, I will send you some pork loins. <laughs> well, no, seriously. I mean, <clears throat> what what ammo did you use on them? Mm. Um, just regular um. Full metal jacket ball ammo. Uh, usually, when I hunt with with my either my pistol with my pistol or now with this little thing, I, I use ball ammo just because I want deeper penetration. penetration. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll if if I all I have is my Glock and I happen to find one out on like my client's property or something, I'll shoot it with a handgun. But for the most part, I usually try to use a deep penetrating uh, ball round. Okay, I often nice. wonder what people use because. I want to try it. I've never hunted. I just want to try it. it it's not like it's going to be my thing, maybe. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a part of the firearms culture, and I want to check it out. And if I find it something I don't enjoy, yeah, I'm bailing. But uh, at least I'm going to try it out. I, um, I, like I said, I've, I've shot hogs with federal HSTs before, and, like, I've dropped them, and not, they hadn't taken a step. I mean, it's, it's – it's like with everything else, it's all about where you put the bullets. Uh, True. But, yeah, I do prefer to use a, a, a deeper penetrating round. Um, I want to try some of the stuff from, like, uh, some of the uh, hard cast lead rounds or something. Okay, like Lehigh. But, yeah, like something. But I, I just never have yet. Maybe one day. Yeah, because I got the, I got the lever action that Henry sent to us. Um, I'm, I'm trying to use it in a lot of different aspects. One, for review, but two... Um, just to get the full use out of it, because uh, CNJFO, one of the Second Amendment groups here, hosts a hog hunt once a year. And I'd love to like have somebody win a trip to the hog hunt from the diversity shoot and provide them with the Henry, you know what I mean, as their hunting rifle mm-hmm. for that trip. <clears throat> just because yeah. it, it would be cool and it ties it all in together. Hog hunt is fun. It's, it's a good time. I wish we. Hey, Zane, uh, when you shoot with a pistol, where, where do you uh, aim? Right behind the head. Uh, well, so you know, obviously, it's kind of hard to explain because um, it depends how close I am. First of all, so if I'm like within 25 yards, yeah, I'll probably aim like right at the ear, or depending on how they're if they're quartered away from me behind the ear or something like that. But if I'm any further than even really 20 yards, I'm gonna aim right right above the front uh, leg because the hog's vitals are a little bit heart. more compact than deal than deer vitals. Um, so you do the heart right, lung okay. shot. Yeah. It, especially with a pistol. If I'm more than 25 yeah. yards, I'm going to go for the heart and lungs. I'm not going to go for a headshot. 
Okay. Nice. I sometimes I wish we had hogs here. Sometimes I don't because I guess they just destroy everything. Oh, they just oh, destroy <laughs> everything. Yeah. I mean, well, that's why they're considered an invasive species, and you don't even need a hunting permit to hunt them. Let's just go out and right. take them. In in Florida, you don't even need a hunting license to hunt hogs. Some states you do have to have a hunting license, like Texas, for example. But in Florida, you don't even have to have a hunting license as long. And if you're on private property, as long as you have landowner permission, you can spotlight them and gun and light at night. And, do and, yeah. and you and can, you can use thermals, yeah, you optics, whatever you want. Yeah, you can do whatever you want to, to kill them because they're an invasive species and they destroy. Yeah. They cause millions of dollars a year in, in in damage just on like the, the farms around this area. So that doesn't surprise me. One of the guys I follow on YouTube, his name is uh, his YouTube channel is Special Ed. I think it has some numbers after it, but he's he's a guy that hunts hogs. He's a gun guy, and he he he's built his AR to shoot six five Creedmoor, um, and he's just building different loads, and it's really cool to watch him combine the two, the build of the rifle, well actually the three, the build of the rifle, the finding out and discovering the load that shoots best with those, that rifle and then shooting the hogs with them. And he does night shooting <clears throat> with a uh, infrared camera. Dude, it's insane. I think it's infrared or maybe it's, yeah, it's infrared, but um, he actually developed a load for it. That was so specific. It had a three foot per second spread in a five shot or a 10 shot group. Nice. How crazy is that? Nice. Wow. Cool. Yeah. I'll get up. <clears throat> yeah. Well, Rob, since you're back, yeah. what did you do? Well, first of all, um, remember that text that Sean sent us and and referred to Bridget? She saw it and she left me. So now <laughs> she said she was gonna go make some money. So I am now back to being single. And I was so depressed, I said, the heck with it. I called my boss and get some time off last weekend. And I flew up to North Carolina to visit some family. Do what? That's cool. No, you yeah. said you finally took some time off. I know you've been working a lot. Oh, man, yeah. I'm killing myself. For, you know, three weeks straight with no day off and I'm salaried. So, anyways, I'm going to quit whining about that and tell you. I flew up, but I flew up for the first time ever. I flew up with a checked firearm. I checked a uh, my shotgun. And it really wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. I always oh. check a firearm when I fly because that's the only way I've not had my luggage lost. <laughs> wow. Really? Yeah, sadly. Sadly, it's really, really difficult for me to do that in Jersey. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I could see that. Yeah. You can't even yeah. check a, a bloody pea shooter. Well, so no, no. What, what mean, airline do you fly, Rob? Um, yeah. American. Okay, I've checked firearms with them before. Yeah, man, I had no problem with it. I got to the airport. The, of course, I had to say the thing locked. It was a, one of those Pelican cases. And he goes, I want to see it. So I said, okay, I opened it up. I had to get the keys out of my bag, showed it to him. He looked at it, put a, a sticker in there and said, yep, I saw it. Closed it back up. Now, I did not use TSA compliant locks. I probably need to talk to Tony about better locks for it because I don't want some airport Yahoo picking the locks or whatnot. But, uh, yeah, I just yeah, threw okay, it in I got there. something for you. Okay, I got it up there, and the only thing is, um, you might want to. I learned that I will plan at least forty-five minutes to an hour of extra time to get checked in, and then on the back side, I don't know how they did it with you, saying, but they hold, held my case to last and brought it up, saw my ID before they handed it to me. So, so the la the last time I flew a checked oh, with a checked firearm, it, I haven't flown in um oh oh wow years i haven't flown since i was on military orders um mm -hmm. every time i've pretty much pretty much every time i've ever flown has been on military orders but um yeah i've always they've always like w wished whisked me through security because they wanted me to like watch the bag go onto the plane and then could they come get me and watch it come off the plane oh, no. so that but that was back before they started zip tying bags and all this crazy yeah, stuff this so no, they didn't. They didn't do that with me. They just wanted me to stick around the the check in counter for about 20, 30 minutes until the because bags were through security. Right, because you're using non TSA locks. They want you there to open it just in case there's right. a problem. And I'm not going to use a TSA lock. It, well, and you're not supposed. If you're flying with a check firearm, they they actually specifically request you don't use TSA compliant locks. 
because you don't want those thieves to be able to steal them. The problem with that is any bag that doesn't have a TSA compliant lock probably has a gun in it. So, well, not only that, but they put a big red sticker on there that says "hand personally hand to owner when at destination." Oh, see, they didn't used to do, they didn't used to do that. That must be a new thing. They they put a tag uh, in the bag, but they yeah, didn't they did like that. mark the outside at all. No, this this was mark. like a, a tag around the handle. A steal me please this, tag. Yeah, yeah, it basically says, "Hey, there is a gun in this bag." Yeah, please steal it. But then. Anyways, got up there, got the gun, got back to the house, went to the ranch, fed some animals. And then Saturday, we went to an NRA banquet. Uh, they were kind of worried that, oh, you know, protesters, yada, 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 boo wah, boo up. Nobody showed up. Must have been, you know, 40 degrees must be a little too cold for the North Carolinians to protest. So it was like 50 degrees. So nobody showed up, bought a few cool toys. Sunday, What'd we went get? to the range. What'd you get at the banquet? Uh,. I really wasn't planning on buying it, but I bought a uh, two two. I said, "What the heck?" I did. I bought two deer cameras or game cameras, a backpack, okay. and a growler. And then I also picked up something on, on a side bet. Uh, I'd like to run this by Zane and Tony too before I do an official review on it. But that Mantis X system. Oh, you you got one of those. Yeah, I picked one up. I, I was like, I got this coupon for Optics Plant. I said, "What the heck?" You know, it's basically a. a a firearms training system. It's not a laser system, but it's, I'm guessing it's got accelerometers in there because it'll actually tell you what you're doing wrong or supposedly tell you what you're doing wrong. I, I've heard really negative things about it, the original version, but I've okay. also heard they have updated it. really improved it a lot. So yeah, I, I, don't, I think I don't know. I think they've done a lot. I don't have one, but last July they had one that I used up at trigger con and it was it was decent i mean i think and i think they're constantly improving it so i think what it's cool cool. is if i could get it and get get with zane or get with tony and do a a range day or just do a because it'll work with uh dry fire supposedly air guns and uh fly fire yeah that's what i've been told about it i've been told it's pretty neat yep Um, yeah every time i go to one of those nra banquets i always I always leave with like no money in my pockets and yeah. and stuff that I probably ha. didn't need, but you know, you know what? I guess for the NRA is for the the shooting sports and all that good stuff. But it's good yeah, the Sunday we went to the gun range. And well, it was the secret to that. Funny. Is show up like show up like I do broke. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> that way you can't buy anything. So yeah, Sunday we went to the gun range, shot a few rounds off, did some nice hundred yard, two hundred yard shooting, you know, and then. It got a little too cold, so we said to heck with it. And that was pretty much my weekend. I ain't done nothing for three and a half weeks, so I'd made it all up last weekend. Good deal. Yeah. All, 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 all that stuff you see on my wall over there, that's all stuff yeah. that came from Friends of NRA Banquets. Yeah, they're all plac- <laughs> the placards and posters and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. I'll tell you what, right. that, uh, that uh, Kimber <laughs> pistol they got for the gun of the year is pretty daggum nice. Mm. Which Kimber. one is it? The one, the Bel Air? <laughs> No, it's a uh, it's a 1911. Um, I'm looking for. It's a it's a Kimber custom I mean, I shop. They... It's like a yeah. Is that it's one of those this. pink ones? Or... No, it's not pink. Hold on, hold on. I got it's, it's, it's I got to blow the screen up there. It's it's look at my screen. It's this frig. Yeah. Hold on. Oh, okay. Yeah. This Kimbers is, this look is a... nice. That was a problem with them. <laughs> the looks weren't never the problem with Kimber. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> it was. Uh, <clears throat> a lot of people said they had rust issues and they had dependability issues. I, I think some of the dependability, mm-hmm. and this is just an opinion, the dependability part was the tightness of the tolerances. You, you I want to know the my rusting. Opinion. My that? opinion with Kimber is, is, see, they messed up. They moved from Oregon to New York. So, mm. oh, that is. So I, <laughs> I, I, I think their quality controls dropped in recent years is kind of the big problem. I think they used to be really good gun because years ago. Like, they were a great base gun to build a race gun out of. And I think their quality control dropped. You can still get a really, really nice Kimber. Or you could get a really, really, really crappy Kimber. The problem oh. is is the quality control. Yeah. i got a question. I think so. Yes. 1911s. <clears throat> yeah. Marsoc used to use my 1911s. Um, Kimbers, They actually. use. Okay, that's what I was going to ask. Because yeah. I know they use Springfield Armories. And yep, I thought they'd use Kimbers, too. Early. We got a. <clears throat> I think we, we, 
early. My last unit got a shipment of them by accident. They were supposed to go to the Marshlock unit south of us, and they went to the wrong unit. We're like, uh, what do we do with these? <laughs> They're like, oh, well, never mind. We're not supposed to have these. <laughs> you order ammo. Yeah, that's where you go to the gun range and shoot them. <laughs> yeah, no. <Nah>. Good time. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I can see doing that during Zane's time. No, when I was in, there was 45 ammo in every unit. When he's in, no, not at all. Now nah, we had, had nine, five, five, six, and, and, and 40 Mike Mike. That's it. They're like, these take big, fat, slow bullets. Where you find these bullets? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so hey, Tony. I had, a, I had a interesting weekend. Uh, <laughs> 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 um. Hey, I got this thing. Remember, I'm trying to I'm trying to build, as Cody said, my my GTFO gun. Get out of get the f out of my house, gun. Um, with this high point, I was watching um, the firearms blog, and they had the 10 millimeter version of the high point. This is the nine millimeter version of the high point carbine. It's called a 995 WC. And he said, "Oh, I didn't need to use a riser or anything. I used the Brownells. This a firearm is empty and the bolt's locked back and has no mag in it." I used the Brownells AK optic, and um, I didn't have to use a riser. Well, when I used the AK optic without a riser, it gave me a, <laughs> a, a upper one third co witness, which means uh, the sight was all the way at the top one third of the optic, and it was just yuck. So um, I'm going to take that off. I'm going to remove the sights because I've gone on High Point's Instagram page. And saw a couple of people run them in uh, in different things. One was running them in a pistol caliber carbine uh, three gun something or shoot. And um, another person was running it with, again, a red dot optic on it. And they took their sights completely off. So that's what I'm going to do with this. Uh, hopefully I can get some range time tomorrow. But my schedule's been busy. If you follow my Instagram, <clears throat> you know Saturday I had a class on home hardening at range 14. Really didn't involve a firearm. I'm... Sean and I are really trying to make sure everything we do is not gun centric. Um, we do first aid this year. Um, we're doing uh, home hardening and we got a couple of more things that are just not about guns. And then uh, Monday uh, we went to the second amendment rally in Trenton uh, Saturday morning when I was on my way to the home hardening class, uh, the NRA board member, Scott Bach, contacted me and asked me did I want to speak at the uh at the diver um not diversity sheet at the uh second amendment rally and I said yes I'd be honored to speak and I got to speak um it was really cool a lot of patriots came out even though we knew they were going to vote along party lines we felt it was really important to show that we were there well none of us had any clue they were going to do that march on America or whatever the hairy heck you call it on Saturday because we'd planned this march well ahead of that because Jersey and they play dirty pool in politics and they will do whatever they can to stop second amendment people. Uh, I'm trying to say it without cursing because uh, I've watched the things they've done here. <laughs> <clears throat> no, we had a recall Sweeney with the Senate president. We had a recall Sweeney rally. And of course the guy who ran the rally was smart enough not to say where the rally was going to be held. He held it to vest until the night before the rally, like nine o'clock, posted it. Two hours later, he got called by the venue saying they got to cancel. How would you like to try to find a scramble and find a place to hold a rally that you already scheduled in the same area that you already scheduled it with like hours to go before the event? That's the kind of dirty crap they pull here in Jersey. So anyway, got to speak at the rally. It was awesome. I did like eight and a half minute speech, which I didn't know it was going to be that long. People seemed to enjoy it. It went a little bit viral <laughs> in the second A, 2A community. And uh, hopefully you guys can see it. It's on Simon Says Train's page. And I think it's, uh, no, it's on Second is for Everyone's page. So if you want to go see it, it's on their Facebook page. Um, I'm glad people enjoyed it. <clears throat> and I think it's really important, no matter where you are, to support Second Amendment groups in your state. Because these stupid laws that they're pushing here will be like cooties and go to other states. They will spread yeah. like a virus. It was all oh, yeah. over my news feed. And oh, yeah, I, mine I, too. I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was okay. good. Because because it 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 hits back you you're you're taking it 
you're taking the fight right back where where that side loves to take the fight. That that side of the argument loves to scream, you know, racist this and you this mm-hmm. and you this, and you you just take the fight right back to him like no. Uh, and here's the facts, and it's there's really no <laughs> there's really no way to combat that without coming across as a major douchebag. Um, yeah, and my my thing is you you you're free. It's First Amendment. You can have your own opinion. You can't have your own facts. Sorry, you can't. That's right. So here are the facts. Second Amendment, uh, excuse me, gun control is racist, and gun control is a 400-year-old racist strategy <laughs> to control people. <laughs> well, what I really liked is... Politics. <laughs> what I really liked is where you, you made the correlation of, like, yeah, they tested this out on blacks. And they figured out it works, so now they're just like, well, whatever. We'll just try to control everybody with it now. And yeah, it works. All right. I mean, it, yeah, no, we went on a political rant. I'm sorry. <laughs> it, it happens. Yep. You know, I, and the thing is, is I, I'm going to let it go because we all love Tony, and he's doing great work for all of us. So. And I really know. mean, I don't want to hijack the show because, I mean, I have my own show for that, but it, it does get – we do this because we like doing this. It's not like yeah. we get paid every week to show up. We, we're gun guys and we like talking about guns, but you can't in this environment talk about guns and not slightly slip into politics. Oh, we would love to just go back to just argue about nine versus 45 and Glock versus MP all day, but <laughs> unfortunately, there's more pressing things to talk about. <laughs> yeah, yes. nine millimeter and F and H. There you go. Enough said. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, 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 I'm going to keep us on track here for a few minutes. Uh, let's see. I, I'm going to try. Uh, let's see what I did. I went and shot a steel challenge match, a local one, because a friend of mine was shooting it, so I decided I was going to go shoot it. I did okay. Uh, that's about what I'm going to say. Uh, okay, meaning... Let's see. In 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 limited, I came in ninth out of seventeen people, so dead center. You didn't uh, come in last. No, uh, I think overall I came in like twenty something, twenty first, twenty second out of like thirty eight people or something. Uh, but you know that's rimfire, rimfire carbine, pistol caliber carbine. They pretty much allow anything. If it's not a rifle caliber, you can shoot it at this match. So, you know, but hey, I posted a short video on my Instagram that a friend of mine took. So it was like one of my clean runs. Uh, No misses. You know, I don't know how he got it. He must have filmed like 50 of them. (laughs) (laughs) So that's what I did. Uh, Move on to the announcements. Bandwidth sponsor is our buddies at Patriot Patchco. Uh, there are not any new patches for pre-order. There's some new shirt. The patch of the month club is still going. It is, like we said, somebody's told us last week, the April patch is the tank with the Easter bunny with his, with his AK or her AK shooting eggs out of the tank, et cetera, et cetera. So that is the April month patch of the month club, which is always cool be- Always fun to get those. Uh, listener support program. You can go to the firearmsradio.tv pledge gun gear review podcast to pledge your support and give us money. If you're shopping Amazon, please use our affiliate link at firearmsradio.tv slash Amazon. If you want to donate to the 2A free diversity shoot from Black Bag Resources, you can use the code Simon Says Train, and anything you buy with that code will be hand delivered to Tony. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Rob. Let's see if we, we can finally get it right, eh? The views and opinions expressed in this podcast are those of the individual co-hosts and do not reflect the official policy or position of the Firearms Radio Network and or their employers. Viewer discretion is advised. This is especially true. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, did somebody mute me? I did. Y'all, y'all ain't right. <laughs> yeah, you fog. You, you were doing too good, so I had to. I had to get rid of the especially true on live shows. 
but thanks, Rob. <laughs> this is this is hey, uh, the, uh, and what I what y'all missed was I said, and this disclaimer is read live on this show. We don't no. do any tape recording crap. That's right. No, we yeah, yeah, we yeah, do it live like Bill O'Reilly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, next. Next main topic. Oh, we don't have any reviews this week, so we'll just get into the Blackers. I know we'll get into the product spotlight. Hey, I put three products in here, but it's just actually quite a few more. First up, we have the Brownells Retro AR 15s and also AR 10s. So don't get send me eight mail. Uh, the MSRP is $12.99.99 to $15.99.99. And what we have is a few different models from the various years. Uh, first up is their model BRN-10A rifle in 308. Uh, they say the years are 55 to 60. And for all you young people, that's 1955 to 1960. Zane. <laughs> uh, yes, I'm aware. And basically it brings back the lightweight 308 rifle. Uh, this one does have a heavy contoured barrel. And it has the aggressive fluting underneath the handguard, similar to the original. A three-pronged Dutch-style fl flash hider, which really doesn't really mean much to me. But uh, it has brown furniture to look like the original fiberglass stuff it had. It weighs in at nine pounds. Uh, they're, all of their receivers are built by FM Products. And our 7075 aluminum. Uh, it has a 20 inch 308 barrel, 1 in 10 twist, but made by Faxon. Uh, it's got a retro buttstock and pistol grip. I'm just going to go through all of these. So if you guys want a specific one to break out at the end, you guys can do that. Uh, the next up is the BRN 10B rifle in 308, which is also the same year, 55 to 60. It is a lightweight barrel assembly. Uh, it runs the closed prong flash hider uh, retro black furniture. Uh, it weighs eight pounds, so they cut a pound off of it. Uh, trigger style charging handle. The other one has this too because they're the AR-10s. The original under the carry handle is the charging handle. Uh, it also has the 308. 1 in 10 barrel manufactured by Faxon and the retro pistol grip and buttstock assembly. Now we get into the 556 five, rifles with the BRN 601, which is 59 to 64. It is a model 601 style slab side lower receiver. And basically it's got the slick side upper, uh, the slab slide, Slower, re lower receiver <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Uh, basically doesn't have any grooves around like the magazine ejection button uh, I mean you guys kind of know what it's like it's easier to just look at the picture and the link than for us to try to explain it to you uh, it is matte gray anodized uh, more like the original were. Uh, it runs a 20-inch 5.56 NATO barrel in 1 and 12 twist with a chrome bore. So basically like the original 1 and 12 twist. It has a duckbill three-prong flash hider. Uh, it has green furniture, so buttstock, pistol grip, and handguard assembly. And it includes a 20-round period correct style magazine. Next up is the XBRN 16 E1 in 556. The years are 64 to 67. So this has the XM 16 E style lower lower receiver. I can't talk today with partial magazine fence. That's what the original was called. And the 16 E1 upper receiver which has a forward assist with teardrop A1 style. It is also matte gray anodized, has the 1 in 12 twist barrel, chrome bolt carry group and forward assist serrations, three prong flash hider, and it is black furniture, comes with a 20 round mag. Next up is, I think, Tony's rifle that he used. Oh, wait. 
he didn't use the M16s in the it, when he was in. That was he's too old for that. Uh, <laughs> we have the 67 to 82 models, the BRN 16A1. So it's your A1 style low receiver with the magazine fence around the button for the so the originals don't have that. Uh, it's in 16A1 upper receiver. It is also matte gray anodized. It runs the 20 inch NATO barrel, one in 12 chrome bore, mil spec phosphate chrome bolt carrier group, A1 flash hider, and black furniture, which also all of these, in, except this last one that we'll get to, have the triangle hand guards on the AR 15 version 556. Uh, I thought I'd throw that in there because it doesn't say so. Next up, we have the XBRN 177E2, which is 67 to 82. And basically, this is their shorty version. It is M16A1 style, lower, upper, matte gray anodized. It has a 12.7 inch 556 NATO barrel, 1 in 12 twist, chrome bore. It has an XM177 flash hider with grenade ring. This one is pinned and welded so that it meets the legal length of 16 inches. Uh, same phosphate chrome bolt carrier group. It has a car buttstock, still the A1 pistol grip, and it runs a little round, short A1, a non-triangular handguard. It also includes a 20-round magazine. And basically what it amounts to is the 308s or the 1599 and the 556 ones are the 1299 ones. So I guess I'll give it over to you guys to rant and rave about it. I think these are really cool. Um, <laughs> no, I really do. I, I really do. I think I'm surprised. And maybe someone has done it. We just haven't seen it before. But I'm surprised it took anyone this long. It like has to do something. Has it? Colt did it. Colt did it. Troy okay. did it. <clears throat> Here's the difference. Colt was three thousand dollars. Well, mm. all right. But what Colt did um, was go to the Philippines and buy their stock of parts, mm. like original parts from that time frame, built for the Philippines, uh, including the furniture. Is the original furniture. And I okay. think they have and the difference here is these are just yeah, these are right. repos- replicas. <clears throat> replicas, yeah. They did original everything. That was them. Um, Troy came in at around two grand when they did it, <clears throat> and Troy is, of course, you know the same thing. They're repos, but yeah. but Troy did it for two grand, which was it is okay. It was a little expensive, but that's what it is. And you know, everything was built. Um, just for this, you know, everybody else is set up to run modern ARs and Troy did retro and then yeah. the else came and just went, everybody's asking us for the parts. Um, let's go ahead and get someone to build the parts for us. And they killed it. And the price is awesome because I don't know if you could get to do this yourself. You I don't think you can build it money. for the right now. I don't, I don't think you could build a retro. And you know, a lot of people are interested, especially collectors or not necessarily collectors, but, but. I guess we'll say students of history that yeah. also like to somewhat collect. Obviously, these are not going to be collectors' well, items, so so don't misunderstand what I'm saying when I say collectors. Yeah, but Zane, that's what I, the point of this is if you bought an original Vietnam vintage AR, I wouldn't want to take it to the range and shoot it because you want to screw it up. You know, right? And this right is here. something you can actually shoot if you're you know you're into that and and that's cool. This the the car models r- really kind of cool. I. I'm a the fan car of models, Mad's cool. Um, I I like them all, mainly because I've been a student of the AR10. Like yeah. I dug that, and I knew I excuse me, I thought I knew I'd never be able to afford one because the only place you saw them was in the history books. And uh, again, I, I'm the kid that always liked firearms. Military firearms were were great because they had a story. Um, one of the coolest things was the Portuguese going into Angola. They sent Portuguese airborne forces. Portuguese airborne forces in the 60s were one of the few people that had a 7.62 by uh, 51 or NATO that didn't use an FAL. They use AR-10s. Right. So uh, if you want to see some really cool photos, you could see Portuguese rocking 
a- AR-10s in the early 60s in Angola. And um, I ended up meeting, ends up, it's a friend of my wife's dad was one of the Portuguese airborne dudes. And oh. we're chilling out at a picnic. And he's telling me about what it was like to run the AR-10 uh, in combat. And I just thought that this, it's like, pinch me. How, how did I end up here? This is awesome. Well, and the, <laughs> the other thing this does is, and what I think is probably one of the coolest things about this whole line is it really brings to light the history of the AR, right? The AR pattern style, whatever you want to call it, rifle. And because a, a lot of people, especially people my age and younger, might think the AR is like a, a new thing, and it's it's not. It's, it's been around for <laughs> sixty years. Like it's it's this is not a new thing, um, and this is just a neat way to pay homage to it. I do wish they had options um, for for a well. For one, I wish they made it a two, which I'm sure they will eventually. <clears throat> um, well, truthfully. All right, uh, uh, I, I'm not being uh, so many people make an A2 yeah. that you can get a Colt A2, you can get an FN A2, or you can get an A2 from Arrow Precision Spikes. So they're just all, um, what's it called? Wyndham Weaponry. All of them have A2s built. So I don't think that's as unique as this as a mark. No, no, the A1s and the originals are, are more unique, but I think they eventually will. I think they'll probably go all the way through current conflicts and do M4s and M4A1s and. I would think they'll probably do an entire line. The other thing I kind of wish they would have done is at least had an option for a more of a modern twist rate on the barrel. Um, Where, I, I, oh, li- sorry, I, didn't I do like Where they went it? with the 1 to 12 because it's period correct. But for someone who actually wants to shoot these, it'd be nice to have like a, a 1 to 7, 1 to 8, 1 to 9. Actually, I don't agree. I, I, I disagree with you. Okay. <clears throat> um, um, reason being, historical, they're historical. That one to twelve, I would never be able to afford one of the real ones ever. Right, um, and I'm glad they had an option for it. But I kind of wish. I mean, I'm, I'm glad I know what you did, mean. But I kind of wish they would have had an option for for something that'll 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 stabilize modern ammo a little bit. But the one to twelve is really built for the fifty five grain, and yes. that's the least expensive. Yep. That's the least expensive range ammo out there. Um, yep. So hey. Go have fun plinking if you want to get some. I mean, I have some full metal jacket match 555 grain. So if you want to squeeze everything, you can out. I feel these guns, for the most part, will be shot by people who just want to see what it was like to shoot one of the old guns and they never had one and would never have one. Um, And if you want to shoot something modern and with modern twist rate, this is not going to be anybody's first AR. No. That's what I'm going to say. No. Well, well. Unless there's some old, you know, Vietnam oh, yeah. vets that that's what it takes for them to get into the AR market. And you know what? If that's what it takes to bring one more person oh, yeah, into I know a modern sporting rifle, hey, great, I'm all about it. But, yeah, I don't think this is going to be a lot of people's first AR. So they're going to have the stuff with the modern tourist rate, pick rail, M-lock, red dot, sure, flat top. Sure. So, yeah, no. The <clears throat> only thing they'll do with this probably is, yeah, probably uh, put some of their other stuff in it, 64, 77, just to see what the heck it does with a 1 in 12, and then they'll see what it does and go, <laughs> yeah, back to the 55. Start keyholing at 10 yards. <laughs> oh, oh, you mean like the Franklin Armory, whatever? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. The thing is, wow. is that they will shoot some of the 62 grain stuff. Yeah, you'll yeah. be able to shoot like, like, 60, like M855. Okay. Whoa. Yeah. I just but, thought of something. Yeah, you know what made this thing just the the bomb in Vietnam with that one in twelve twist rate when it hit someone? It tumbled. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> Man, that home defense round just took a whole new freaking twist, didn't it? Well, yeah, yeah, you know what happened like a twenty inch barrel in front of you. Well, that's well, why yeah. you buy the that's why you buy the last one. The one seven, the XM one seventy seven. The 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 car. Uh, yeah. yeah, but here's the thing. That I like brow, that little, I like the car one. I think it's cool. That's how I, I learned, really like it. Twenty inch barrel is how I learned to use uh, run CQB. Yep. Well, so. these are really honestly <laughs> not a lot different. I, I guess they are, but but it's like when when FN released their semi automatic version of the um 
of the uh, A2? The Saw. No, when they released the oh, same automatic okay. version of Saw. Like, yeah, no one was buying that for practical uses. Dudes that were carrying them overseas were buying them because that's, you know. Yeah, but I'm not going to use a Saw as a personal home defense weapon. Right. Yeah, no, but that's what I'm saying. I don't think too many people are going to buy these for that either. These are nost- no, for no, nostalgia no, purposes. Anyways. Yeah. And and yeah. it's 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 along the same line. It's nostalgia and it's it's neat. And they are, and it looks like Brownells has done a good job with making these very period correct. Oh, they uh, have yeah, such I, a good which job. Which I can only assume they would because it's Brownells. I mean, right? They, I think they did their homework really well. Uh, like you were saying, they're, you know, the only thing is, is I don't know. There wasn't a re- what was it? The original ones maybe ran a one in fourteen twist barrel. Which... The original, original, like the first generation. Yeah, but yeah. I don't think those were ever issued. Those never like. I don't believe. I, I, I could be way off base. I, 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 I don't believe those were the ones that the Navy SEALs and the Air Force bought like private. Yeah, it's I yeah. think that was the first batch way back then. And what happened is when Big Army decided they wanted to get it they didn't buy commercial they went and tested it out and they discovered the faster twitch rate did horrible things to accuracy when you got into arctic conditions and they're the ones that change it to the one in 12 so that's when that happened when it went from the very first iteration again navy seals and air force security forces to big army and big army um changed the twist rate up i could yeah i i don't know either but you know, that's the thing is, you know, I'm looking at these and they look just great. Yeah. You know? yeah. And in a world full mm-hmm. of race to the bottom, who can build the lightest AR? I'm happy to see something like this that isn't like four and a half pounds with ridiculous like cuts. Well, the thing around. is, the thing is, is they're not a heavy gun anyway in yeah. this. I mean, I don't these know. These three if, weights look awesome, man. I, I mean, don't they, know if like, I'm not, the AR. I'm not an, yeah. Yeah, I'm not an AR-10 guy at all, but mm-hmm. these three oh eights look sweet. I don't even know which one I'd want more. Uh, yeah, like the first one or the second I want the one. First one. Like for I want instance, the, first one. the 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 BRN six oh one, the green one, it weighs mm-hmm. in at six pounds eleven ounces, so it's not like. And that's yeah, roughly yeah. Uh, yeah. It's not Here's the heavy. thing, M sixteen. M16 A2 weighed 8.9 pounds. Um, just just to clarify how much the weight went up. And truthfully, you got better sights out of it. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> and a worse, but a worse trigger. But that's, yeah, on, but... The, that's on the military models. So these, this, the, these here are, are going to have the same trigger. But A2s have terrible, like. M sixteen A twos, the three round bursts have terrible triggers on them. Um, well, my thing is, at that time, I didn't know what a good trigger or a bad trigger. I just shot as well as I could. It's, um, it's now, true. Now, now that I have this Trojan firearms, uh, what is it? Uh, TF fifteen trigger. Yeah, it's like two pounds. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Let me shoot my high. Let me dry fire my high point some more, just so I don't get spoiled. <laughs> Yeah. Well, so everyone I've everyone I've spoken to that's fired all the period correct guns, like have mm-hmm. have said that the the A ones had a far better trigger than the A twos, just because switching to that three round burst trigger, you never know where it's at in queue. So you may have a six pound yeah. trigger and you may have a nine pound trigger depending on where it's at in that three round queue because it it doesn't reset itself. So that's the main reason for the terrible trigger. I wonder who's making and the, the main triggers re- for for these brownells. Probably um, the brownells. Probably just a, a brown. Yeah, they're trigger, probably just their standard mill spec yeah. trigger. And yeah. that's the cool part about these. I'm thinking, I wonder how much of these, how many parts. Let's say if you do have one of the early A ones, and the tri- the the um, hand guards were one of the problems. What they were made of, they'd shatter. And so, so with the butt size, that the that big light or whatever they were, kind of yeah, yeah, that thing was just bad. I wonder would any of these parts retro on their guns and still work. Probably, because oh, probably. here's something else. Here's something else. <clears throat> I feel the design got better as it matured, of course, like most designs do. But these A1 <laughs> hand guards were left and right. They you had to get the right. Yeah, 
they were left and right, and they were a pain in the butt to put on and take off. So again, as it matured, it just got better. Um, well, and, but this is this is what fifty to sixty years of a gun's development does. Oh yeah, I uh, I just because you know you guys are questioning weights that XM one seventy seven they list as five pounds eleven ounces, so it's under six pounds. Wow. So I'd really want one. I mean, truthfully, yeah, I, th- man, man cave. I, I really don't like man cave. I like study. <laughs> That's what I call mine. I call mine a study. I'd, I'd rather have a study. I don't Firearms know. room. What, what <laughs> it, it, it would really have these mounted <laughs> in something nice, but they would be there along with the saw. And if I could find a civilian version of the M60 E3, because that's what I humped, uh, I also rocked the saw, but the E3 was what I had. I'd love to have that on my wall just because, hey, glory days. Well, actually, <laughs> you don't put it on your wall. You put it in all that concealment furniture, correct? <laughs> no, you want to see this thing. No, I want to see this. Concealment furniture is for something else. <laughs> I, do, I do need to replace the, the commie gun that's hanging on my wall with like a real gun. Wow. What's on your wall? A Mosin. I can't see it. Oh. Oh, hang on. Hey, I understand. That was an American gun, too. That was the M1916 uh, 7x6, too. You see that it was there? actually American issue. Yeah. Yep. I saw it. Yeah. Westinghouse made them. We issued them to American troops going to the Soviet Union to guard the supplies we put, we gave them during World War One. So what I when wanted, I wanted... Soviet Union. I wanted to hang a, 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 a M1 Grand or M1 Garand, however you're supposed to say it now. Uh, but I can't afford one of those because I have the blueprints hanging over there somewhere. <laughs> so, so I was like, well, no one's going to know the difference but me, so we'll just hang this cheap thing up. <laughs> well, now the whole world knows because it's be on right. tape. <laughs> eh. Oh, well. Yeah, it's on tape. How old are you, dude? Really on tape? <laughs> hey, it's not on eight track like you would say. <laughs> it's on reel to reel. Oh, reel to reel. Man. Well, I guess we'll been move. Brutal. I know. We'll move on to the next kind of retro thing I put in here, and that's the Auto Ordnance Victory Girls 1911. It has an MSRP of nine hundred and ninety bucks. <clears throat> So what we have is Auto Ordnance, as some people know, is owned by the Car Firearms Group. Basically, what they did was they took one of their bone stock. It looks like an A1 style 1911. I'm just guessing here, but that's what it looks like. It is. GI versions. Uh, And they laser etched a pinup girl on the right side and Rosie Riveter on the left side with a U.S. Army Air Corps insignia. Yep. U.S. Army Air Corps. Yeah. On both sides of the frame. And then they Cerakoted it with armor black and gunmetal gray. It is still 45 ACP, 5-inch barrel, you know, 39 ounces, blade front, uh, checkered wood grips with the U.S. logo. Uh, it looks like it has some tiny sights like the originals had. Oh, yeah. And it comes with one seven round magazine. Basically, I put this in here because one, I think it, I thought it went well with the retro rifles. Mm. But for the other reason is, is I think this is a sweet looking 1911. It's an auto ordinance. Oh, it, it, it looks awesome. Too bad it's an auto ordinance. <laughs> well, and, here's the thing. But how of much are you going to I thought it was great. And why, Tony? <laughs> Because he, his wife is home. He was like, uh, I think it has Rosie the Riveter. That's because you took Rosie the Riveter to the prom, you old. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, he wants to relive that date, right? Yeah, he well, wants to relive the date. Slow dancing to Glenn Miller at the prom. <laughs> um, the night that you dumped him. <laughs> um, I think they're cool. Um it's, I, I see the retro thing, and all, I carried an auto ordinance. I carried an order, auto ordinance 1911 my first three years out of the Marine Corps as my personal uh, defense handgun. Um, that sucker got heavy fast. 
<laughs> you got to be dedicated to back in the 1911. Uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're heavy. Um, I'm sorry, but between the Glock 19 and the 1911, I'm taking the Glock 19 all day. To you cap. too? I thought that was just me. Uh, no, hey, I, I loved my 1911. <clears throat> the, I, uh, I love the hammer bite that the full, frill, full hammer gave me in a web of my hand. Um, <laughs> because it was manly that my hand was bleeding a lot whenever I went to the range because I have a meaty suction Zane, right there in my fingers. You're going to get us hate mail for making noise again, Zane. Am I making noise Hate again? mail. Yeah. Know, it sounds like you're dropping a transmission. You're a toolbox or something. <laughs> he dropped a transmission talking about am I making noise. <laughs> okay, you can continue now, Tony. But... Uh, 1911s are fun. I, I feel this looks good. Um, I I like Justin Moon. Thank you for the stuff you sent for the diversity sheet. <laughs> but, but I wouldn't buy this because it's not my thing. I, I, if anything, I'd buy the auto ordinance version of a 1911. Just a GI 1911. Uh, again, this is cool. But nobody in World War II carried anything that looked like this at all. So, yeah, that's kind of thing. Like, it's not really retro because the paint job. Yeah, like it's not period correct. And quite honestly, and really, a thousand dollars for a gun with I'll go ahead and say questionable reliability. Um, I don't know how it's not even that. better. I don't know if they got better since like... car owns them. Maybe. Yeah, but to me. Know. To me, Zane, it's not even a question of reliability because I don't think someone's buying a $1,000 1911 with this theme on it. I just find it questionable as, as a commemorative. I mean, really? Yeah. Rosie the Riveter wasn't on the side of some. You know what I mean? It's not even like it's nose art. And plus, most of the guys in bombers carried revolvers. Yeah, they were carrying <laughs> yeah, I mean, the 38. Yeah, yeah no, one's, were carrying no one's really buying this to shoot it. And no one's buying it for nostalgia purpose. And so what's the target market? Again, that's kind of my question on a lot of stuff is what is the target market here? It looks and cool. People buy it. It looks cool. I, I'm not saying well, it does. But remember, people who, bought who's pet that rocks company? too. So. Exactly. Yeah, it looks cool. They'll buy it. <laughs> They'll buy it. My question is this. Uh, who made... I think it used to be in NRA magazines, like the gold-plated 1911s, the gold-plated Tommy guns, the gold-plated, you know, like, like the really high-end looking commemorative stuff, like uh, lever actions with John. Yeah, Lane. and they had all this stuff painted yeah. on them, and yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. remember, but yeah, but I know what you're talking those about. Those make more sense to me and look more commemorative-like than this. This looks like, hey, do some cool stuff. Because most auto ordinance 1911s, I'm looking at their page. It's six 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 seventy five to six hundred ninety bucks for a regular auto ordinance World War Two ish GI ish, right. and um, mm -hmm. and and if you want a more modern 1911 from auto ordinance, it's still it, it's this price tag. You know what I mean? With like uh, not Bomar sights, but adjustable sights, all the really cool stuff and stainless and the checkering and all that. So to me, it's a swing and a miss. Still cool, but it is a swing and a miss. Yeah, I think it's okay. I, I mean, I think it's really cool looking, but yeah. yeah, you guys, the market, I don't know. I think the only people who will buy us like, yeah, that's pretty cool. I'll buy one just to have another 1911 or something. I And you know, their picture looks, I mean, doesn't look that great. Uh, go check out the videos on uh, YouTube of SHOT Show, Call On SHOT Show. And when you do the high res, I looked at it this morning and I was like, and that's where I pulled the pictures from for Instagram, right? Uh, mainly because it was hard to fit all three pictures in. So I was able to do it with Instagram, but it really looks good. It really yeah. does. It looks better than these pictures. Well, that's always good to know. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Zane gives it a Mac. Now we're going to get into the. I, I call this the Tony Tony Taurus because it looks I think it's something Tony should own. <laughs> and what we, what we have up next is the Taurus Raging Hunter. 
the MSRP is only 919 bucks and it may be a better deal than the auto ordinance, but I'm going to go with probably not. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. No. Okay. Let me get, let me go get ahead, into guys. it here. Okay. I, this thing is their new, I, I, I had something, I had some experience with this, so go ahead. <laughs> okay. This is their new, newer, whatever, 44 mag, uh, it's matte black. It uses their kind of rubber cushioned grip that they use on a lot of these. Uh, it has a six shot capacity. It weighs 55 ounces. So like a pound more than your 1911. <laughs> uh, the barrel length is eight and three eighths of an inch. Uh, it's 1.8 inches wide, 6.8, 6.4 inches tall. It is a double single revolver it has a fixed front sight and an adjustable rear you know the only thing i think this is a pretty cool looking revolver i like it i would probably buy one with the exception of i don't think you know what you're going to get with taurus you're either going to get it's you're going to get something good or you're going to get something that has timing issues or something and i don't know if they've improved in the last few years but no i think they've gotten worse so i think uh, years ago taurus revolvers were decent their auto loaders have always been junk sorry you can you can write us hate mail if you want (laughs) but their their pistols are are junk they don't work they're they're junk their revolvers (laughs) have been um better in the past um but in the last 10 years, the quality control has gone down on them. I've shot several of the Raging Series guns. Never a Raging Hunter, but I've shot Raging Bulls and Raging Hornets. And I think they even made a Raging Judge at one point. Like, they just yeah. – I don't remember. They I think did. they did. They I, did. And I'm pretty sure I've shot it. I have a buddy who has, like, an infatuation with the Raging Series guns. He loves them. Um, so, I, I mean, I'll shoot it, but – I have not been impressed by any of them in any of the calibers from 17 HMR all the way up to 454. I just, I'm just not impressed with Taurus and I own a Taurus gun. So I say that because I have made the mistake of purchasing a Taurus in the past and I just wouldn't trust anything made by them at this point. Anything. Gotcha. Tony, what's your experience? All right, <clears throat> my my experience is not pulling triggers. All right, I, I'll, I'll take that. I stopped. What I tried to do? Okay, let me go ahead and start. What happened was I was in uh, <laughs> I was in Harrisburg for the Great American Outdoor Show, and I stay a few days. And if you stay till the middle of the week, absolutely nothing is happening, and you can actually talk to these reps from the companies for a long time. So I went over to the Taurus booth and I checked out their stuff because usually I'm flying through and I blow past Taurus all the time because of the horrible reputation that they've earned. Um, and he had the Taurus 444 Ultralight. <laughs> and he had the 444 Ultralight, which weighs in at 28 ounces and it's a 44 Magnum. And he was, <laughs> this is their rep going, I would never shoot this thing again. How heavy it is it? It hurts. 28 ounces? Uh, 28.3 ounces. Oh, 44 no, no, Magnum. No, no, no. No. <laughs> no, thank you. I was you. like, I said, well, what about putting 44 specials in? He was like, that's what was in it when I shot it. <laughs> so, weight is your friend in a Magnum handgun. Now, flip side, this thing weighs significantly more than that. Uh, it weighs, with the barrel it has on it, I think it five. weighs 55 ounces. So it's a decent size. Here's the thing. Taurus quality control fell off. Taurus handgun, uh, sem- uh, semi-autos have not always been junk. They were awesome um, right after Beretta left and Taurus bought the Beretta plant and started making the same thing on the same machine. I, I will give you that. Some of the original T92s they made, the yep. Beretta 92 were great. clones, were, were good guns. I, um, I forgot about that. I'll give you that one. So, I mean, it was the same people making the same gun. Another thing they were really good at were making Smith & Wesson sub-nose copies. They they were good at that because Smith & Wesson actually went to Taurus for help when they were having problems. 
And I don't know what happened with Taurus. I mean, maybe there's a Brazilian freedom group, um, but somebody <laughs> bought them. <laughs> we're, we're, uh, I'll say we're all laughing because Zane took a drink of something and I think he just spit it out his nose. <laughs> so let me, let me let me interrupt you real quick. Didn't so you, you bought up Freedom Group and and of course we all know and for those of the listeners who don't, Remington just announced bankruptcy. Didn't Taurus just recently appoint an old Remington? Like CEO as their new CEO, hey, or yes, Remington, <laughs> or did Remington, or was it the other thing? way around, or yeah. something? Oh, I it, think it might have been vice versa. Yeah, from Tor- it's like, man, <laughs> I don't know if that was the best uh, course of action, but I'm sorry, I just had to throw that <laughs> out. Yeah, there. continue. Yeah, putting putting someone from Remington in a decision making uh, role in your company is like hiring the captain from the Exxon Valdez to drive your freaking tour ship. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Dude ran into Alaska. You might not want him behind the wheel. I mean, it's such a huge target. How could he? How could he miss he ran, it? He ran into the biggest state in America, <laughs> and his name was Brian Cunningham. Oh, honey, B- bigger than like seventy um, percent anyway. of the sovereign nations in the entire world. <laughs> he hit Alaska, but oh, my thing is this: Taurus has a messed up reputation. Um. Some some gunsmiths won't even work on a Taurus. Grant Cunningham refused to work on Taurus revolvers. He said because their specs, their own specs are off. So you can't just, you can't fix their bad QC. Uh, another thing about their, not only quality control, but the customer service. Because uh, Taurus bought Heritage Arms. Heritage Arms makes an expensive 22 revolvers out of uh, Florida. Yeah, well, the, the mom and pop, husband and wife that ran that company sold the Taurus. And now if you have a problem with it, you have to call Brazil. And they're, I mean, it's just everything about them is bad customer service, bad quality control. And sometimes you get good guns from that, but sometimes you miss. And then you can't even get your gun back or fixed. So I just say save your money up and buy Smith & Wesson and buy once, cry once, because it's only $300 more or so. I'm just saying, if you're buying this, you're buying a hunting gun. It's not like you're buying a self-defense firearm, because I usually don't do that. Buy what you can afford. But if you're getting one of these, it's one of those things. You're not going to put a butt ton of rounds through it, your hunting gun. You're not going to put a butt ton of rounds through your 44. Well, so save up and buy a Smith & Wesson. Or does, Ru- does, Ru- does Ruger make a comparable gun to this? I didn't even think about it until just <clears throat> I should have briefed Yeah, Ruger, Ruger, Ruger so. makes Red Hawk. We're gonna make yeah, a red okay, hawk. yeah, the red makes hawk. a black hawk. Super red hawk. What? Yeah. What's the so what's the MSRP else. on those? That's got to be right in the same ball. It's hawk, probably right? around the same. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, I didn't look it up today. Yeah, but probably in the so same. So if you can't afford the Smith and Wesson, look at the Ruger. I mean, Ruger makes yeah. as much as I'm known for hating on Ruger on the show. Ruger makes decent revolvers. Um, Ruger makes great revolvers. Ruger, They're a little heavier. Yeah, they are a little heavier. But, but like you said, <laughs> for a forty-four Magnum, especially you're not. This is not going to be your concealed carry gun. What's the price of this? Eight and three quarter. This Hold is uh, nine nineteen. Nine nineteen is the MSRP. We're talking MSRP at Ruger's is a thousand dollars for their uh, five and a half inch barreled six round capacity uh, Red Hawk. Okay, so a little bit shorter barrel, but comparable. Well, what is in, it? Six inch barrel. This, this is an eight, the one where t- the Raging yeah. Hunters are eight and three quarter, okay. eight and three eighths, I think. All right, we're talking $1,079 for the seven and a half. And $1,159, yeah. yeah, seven and a half. So yeah, pay the extra thousand dollars to get the Ruger. To the extra hundred bucks. Yep. That's yeah. what I meant, extra hundred, uh, not extra thousand. Yeah. Yeah, spend, spend the extra hundred, get the Ruger. You, you're, you'll be better off. You'll have people that can actually. Um, in this country that can service you with customer service, you'll have gunsmiths that know how to work on Rugers in this country and will advertise it as such. You probably won't be sorry that you purchased a Ruger. And I mean, I know people who have Rugers and sent them back and they had so many problems. They were like, just sell it. And that's fine, but it's still a Ruger. Yeah. I know yeah. way more people that have Tauruses that just didn't work. When Taurus first came out with their version in 1911, their PT 1911, I really wanted it because uh, they were like, we're gold plated and blah, blah, blah. And they just look cool. Hey, I, I like the pimp gun. 
<laughs> um, I, I don't know where everybody laughs because everybody stops and looks at it. When you go to the NRA museum, nobody's ooing and eyeing over the matte black 38 revolver, but everybody stopped over the thing that's totally engraved with pearl handles. So, you know, poo poo. <laughs> pew pew or poo poo? What? <laughs> yep, both. Why can't we have both? We can. Uh, what is he doing with that horrible Taurus? No, I'm causing I'm noise. Playing. Oh, I thought, <laughs> I thought it was no, muted. I thought it was muted. No, you're That's not you're playing. You're not muted. I'm playing with my terrible. So, for those who are watching, I'll show you. I have a Taurus. So, when I say they're terrible, I know because I've shot this thing and I've never made it through about a magazine and a half without some sort of malfunction or failure. Um, you know, you live and learn. I bought this years ago. I didn't know any better. Yep. Okay. Well, I think we killed that bull or whatever we're shooting today. Oh, Raging Hunter. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we actually have quite a bit of listener feedback this time for some reason. Uh, first up, this I missed last week, so I it was a Facebook message. It's from David D. Uh, it says, guys, begging for feedback is so unbecoming. I think you are onto something, though. Let's hear some Springfield hate. <laughs> I have a pile of XDM, XDs, and a beautiful national match M1A that shows up at service rifle matches. Let's hear it. Serious. Great show. Easily the easiest listening show. And, Tony, kudos to you for doing what you do. Can't think of a better way to build bridges in the 2A community. Much respect. Thank you. Yeah. I think. Nice. You know, like okay. Well, I'll, I'll agree with him. I've got a couple of Springfields. I bloody hate them. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yes, I bloody hate them. Uh huh. Yeah. I'm. Uh -huh. I'm. Well, I, I guess I'm, I don't want to bleep myself, so I'm just saying the bloody word. You know, I yeah, I've, I've said this before that you know I don't really hate Springfields. I kind of hate what they did to. Illinois or whatever it no, was. No, I hate the gun. The gun is just uh, a terrible piece of junk. <laughs> uh, the your I ha sucks. I know. I had a M1A, and I'm gonna say it was. You know, it was so terrible. I mean, just terrible. But I like M1As, and it was a good rifle, actually. <laughs> uh, um, I can't really say too much bad about their products unless they come out with what everybody else has for a higher price, meaning the Saint. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, well, and I, by what everyone else has, you mean a, a version that's made to terrible standards. It was a BCM. It was a freaking BCM rifle. What are you talking about? Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was all BCM stuff. Uh, uh, the uh, Springfield has helped the diversity shoot out a lot. They've sent me thousands of dollars worth of stuff uh, back in the early days when I first got started. And uh, one of the coolest guns we had at the diversity shoot was the M1, the Scout Squad, or yeah, Squad Scout. I forget how to say it. Um, everybody shot that thing, including like less than 100 pound women, all the way up to dudes. They were lined up to fire that. And it was an 18-inch barrel M1A. It was awesome. Um, really liked the thing. And then uh, came NRA of last year when and when it was discovered that they were playing politics in Illinois and tried to get a carve out for them in the laws that were coming down. Um, and since they were the biggest dog in Illinois yeah, as a firearms manufacturer, they got special consideration and supposedly they took it and the firearm industry lost their damn ever loving mind on them. And Rock River. Rock River usually gets a buy in this conversation. No, you don't get a buy from me. Not, <clears throat> not somebody who stood outside freezing doing a second amendment rally. No, <laughs> you don't get a buy. Um, that was some dirty stuff. Now they're talking about there was a misunderstanding. Hey, get your crap together. And XD suck. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. yeah, pretty much. So I'll, I'll, I'll speak on to the XD thing a little bit. Um, I... So I follow a bunch of instructors all over the internet that are much better instructors than I because obviously I like to take uh, uh, classes myself. What do you mean and, James Jagger's his hero? 
That's not what I said. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so one of one of those instructors a a, uh, a while back. James no, Jager. No, 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 none of those. One of those. It was Aaron Cowan because um, he he made okay. the post public. So I don't have a problem throwing his name out there. It was a public post he made. Um, he's very um, he's very meticulous about record about records. And for two and a half years, he kept records of every single firearm that came through his class and every single catastrophic malfunction. And he defines, for, for those so we're all on the same page, he was defining catastrophic malfunctions, any malfunction that required disassembly or tools to fix. He had over 630 Glocks come through classes. Keep Sorry going. about that. Dro- dropped off a little bit. And, <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, wow. Those, Two of those suffered catastrophic malfunctions. Of the 300 and some odd M&Ps, two of those suffered catastrophic malfunctions. Of the 25 XD line of pistols that had come through his classes, 20 of them had experienced catastrophic malfunctions. So while that's not a huge sample, to me, that is enough to say I'm going to get an M&P or a Glock, or a Glock. over an XD because <laughs> – that's enough to me for me to say. I mean, that's what law enforcement calls a clue. So, and I'm sure yours works fine. And you've put nine million rounds through yours, yeah. and you've never had an issue. And I'm, you know, I'm okay, internet, we got it. But I until will, you've but, like pressure tested your gear, you don't know. I will say no. that I had an original XD and forty that I won. Okay, so I didn't purchase it. I won it. I installed a Powder River Precision Trigger. That's yeah, <laughs> and I probably put four or five thousand rounds through it before I sold it, and I had no problems with it. And this is this is like USPSA matches, steel matches, was where most of this was shot. I'm not saying that. You know, and it's so mine seemed to work at least for that many rounds. Now, have, yeah, I, and who knows? I, did I get a good one? Yeah, it worked fine for me. But <laughs> and you know, competition usually is kind of like training classes. They a lot of times, if something's going to break, it's going to break gonna during break the those. competition. Yeah, but um, no, no, I'm I'm joking. And striker a fire, and striker fire guns don't need backstrap safeties. Well, I'm, uh, that, I'm with you there. <laughs> I, I don't like that. Truthfully, when I meant XD suck, that's the only design feature I don't like on it because it's striker fired already. It doesn't need one. But no, my friend Sandy, who runs uh, USPSA, um, she's a firearms instructor. She runs USPSA almost every weekend during the season unless she has a class. She she has a 45. Sandy's uh, freaking, I think, 5'1", maybe shorter, but she's also uh, a Krav Maga instructor, so... Yeah, Sandy's like 6'3", and uh, real badass. You know, she's 6'3", and comes up to the middle of my chest. Um, she's she's awesome. She runs her gun. She doesn't have a problem with it. Rob Pincus is a friend of mine. He's also sponsored by Springfield. He carries an XD. But I just don't like that grip safety. It's it's a way that if you don't have a grip on that striker-fired gun, it won't go pew-pew when you need to go pew-pew. Honestly? Yeah, I know you. Yeah, I, I know you should have I a great just don't like the way it feels in my hand when I shoot the bloody thing. I had no problem with that. I just I'll, I just I'll be honest, at it going. I've never heard anyone say good things about the XD line of pistols that wasn't sponsored by Springfield. Hey and hey. again, Sandy, I shot it, it's fine. I just again there are other striker fired polymer handguns out there that doesn't have a point another failure point built into it. And, and honestly, the majority of those catastrophic failures that he recorded had to do with the spring in the backstrap safety. So if oh. that feature was eliminated, the majority of those catastrophic malfunctions would have gone away. To be and fair. let's say this, the M&P and the Glock are service pistols. They're built like service pistols. The XD American is service pistol. Yep. The XD is a Croatian service pistol. Make of that what you may. Yeah. <laughs> okay then we got some feedback from itunes uh so the first one is good mix of reviews but it has three stars so 
and it's by like a g g a j g k or something uh it says i like the mix of reviews and product spotlights you have on this podcast lots of negativity though that's it um so. hold on <laughs> I, I have a question because I, I still believe in what Ryan says. You don't attack the reviewer. You need to be more specific. Is it negativity as us goofing on each other? Or is it negative reviews? Towards, or because if you want nothing products. if you want nothing but positive reviews, pick up guns and ammo. Hick- it's, it's Hickok forty five. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um it's gun blast and it's everything from guns and ammo. Yeah, I mean, so my whole thought is, uh, you know, thank you for the feedback because we do ask for feedback every week. So thank you for the feedback. Um, yeah. And so we, we, we are negative and a lot. And honestly, Chad and, and, the, and the rest of us pick stuff sometimes specifically <laughs> because we know it's going to elicit a negative reaction from everybody else. And there's a specific reason for that. If mm-hmm. Like the R fifty one was God's gift to man if you looked at gun magazines when it first came yep. out. And we know that is a terrible, terrible piece of gear. So everyone else can be all positive. Someone has to be the voice of reason in the firearms community. And those of us on the panel, we are all n- none of us are what I would consider your average gun owner. Both Rob and Chad have been to the NFA process. Chad has a machine gun, for God's sake. Tony spent what, eight minutes. A yeah. You didn't know that? <laughs> he talked oh, about I'll it say. last week or two weeks ago. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, Rob's got silencers. Rob does precision rifle stuff. Tony spends eight minutes in the freezing cold talking about why, you know, gun controls a 400-year-old <laughs> racist strategy. I hold instructor credentials for law enforcement, military, and civilians. We're not your average gun guys. And – and I'm not knocking average gun guys by any means. Like if that's, if you're just the guy who likes to shoot, that's great. That's where we are here for you. And we, we are trying to help you not waste your hard earned money. So if all of us agree that something's stupid, there's a good chance. It's probably stupid. Well, it's now, just there's like plenty the... of things we disagree on. Like, like Tony thinks, you know, piss caliber carbines are the bee's knees. And I think they're retarded, but they're so awesome. we're going to disagree on things like that. <laughs> But but if all of us are sitting here dogging on something, you may want to just, you know, kind of like kind of like this raging hunter. I mean, kind of like the raging hunter. <laughs> what did we do? And we're like, go buy a Ruger, <laughs> you know. And we yes. ragged on Ruger, you know, a while back because oh, yeah. we're like, oh geez, why did they do this? But you know, it's one of those things. You know, in this case, we're going to tell you go buy a Ruger or Smith and Wesson. Because we don't think that the Raging Hunter is going to work for you. So, no, Chad, no. you rephrase that. I don't think anything from Taurus is going to work. Well, I, I, <laughs> you know, I've, we're well, not talking about their whole line here. <laughs> yeah, my, my thing is I try to be fair, but I also want to be fair to people that listen. And you take your time out to listen to this on your ride to work or, or whatever you do while you're working. I don't want to waste your time blowing smoke up your butt because somebody sent me hats and stickers because that's not the way it works. You know what I mean? At least not for me. Um, Henry sent me some stuff. The Henry guns are great. If I had a problem with one, you'd hear about it. Um, yeah, I told you. What's up? I say, hey, I've got several Henry rifles. They're awesome rifles. But, but I'm just using an example of someone that sent me something. Uh, the high point. Carbine. I told you I broke that sucker. I'll let you know. I broke a carbine from High Point. Um, and they got right on it and took care of it. Has well, anybody sent me anything that's hot garbage? Yeah, I got something for free that was hot garbage and one size fits all inside the waistband holster <laughs> that Uncle Mike's would have turned down uh, <laughs> producing. And I'm not going to tell you about it because it's hot garbage and I'm not going to waste that time. Yeah, and to be fair, I have turned down products to review, and I'm like, no, I'm not going to review your product because I'm biased towards it, and I think it's garbage already, and it wouldn't be fair for me to even even, even do that. Well, it was you won't like... see me review. You won't see me review. A, oh, oh, oh man, I can't even say it. What's quieter than the footsteps of a Navy SEAL? Urban carry. That's it. Urban you carry. Won't me, you won't see me uh... review Urban carry holster. It's just not happening. <laughs> It's like before the show, 
even before Tony, I think, jumped on. You know, I reviewed that Vortex last week, and Rob's like, you know, I did, it's good, but I didn't think it was spectacular. And Rob's like, oh, I, I'm, I got some feedback for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a Vortex. You know, we should get 11. You know, and, well, it's an honest review. That's how I felt about it. And, you know, it's like, well, not everybody can have – I mean, there are products that are just spectacular, but I didn't feel that was. And there wrong. are products, and there are products that are just <laughs> crap. Right, and I've had those products that are just crap. But to be fair, most products fall in the middle. Oh and, yeah, and, and and we really try to be fair with what we do. And yeah, everything we don't touch. Like um, when we were, t- the new AK optic came out for Bush now. But a lot of us had already used the TRS-25 from Bushnell. So our opinion was based on the exact same thing with a different name on the side. You know what I mean? We put yeah. that together. And and if if something comes out that we haven't shot yet, like Diamondback, but two of us, uh, uh, three of us on the panel actually handled Diamondbacks, right? Yeah. Yep. And your two, you two said it was garbage, and I had a show model that they were taking out displaying across the country. I mean, they went from SHOT Show to this. So I'm thinking they probably did a really good job on their quality control, and I didn't see what you guys saw. Yeah. Right. I've reached out to them, by the way, and they won't call me back. I think they're still mad. Yeah. Oh, They'll Tony, be by the way, you know how you said you looked at that? What is it? The M and P Easy or whatever it was in three eighty. Mm-hmm. They had yeah. one at the local store that I looked at, and you know it was one of those things. I was like, "Oh, you guys have one of those? I got to check it out." And yeah, it's like the slide is is like doing a twenty two or something. Even I mean, it yep. was super easy. Uh, you know, the trigger was good on it. The mm-hmm. only thing I didn't like about it was, oh, kind of like the XD is the grip safety. It's the grip safety. But at least on that one, the grip safety partially cocks the strike, right? So if we, yeah. I don't, it, yeah. So, yeah. And it, it, it does, plays right. into why it's easier for the gun to wreck. But right. we don't need to get, I guess. Yeah. And the other but, thing I, I didn't like about it was the grip, the grip safety stuck out a little bit. It didn't go flush. Mm. My thing is this, that this fills a role that I've been looking for as a firearms instructor that teaches a significant amount of women and older women. I, 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 maybe it's because of the diversity shoot. Maybe it's word of mouth. I don't know, but all of my customers, clients, students, whatever you want to call them, aren't, you know, tactical timmies. Um, a lot of them are older or have health problems that I've dealt with because we can between Sean and myself. Um, and the reason I have the 686 with the trigger job that's that's like two and a half pounds and the double action pull that's like six is because of a 69-year-old doctor that came and took my class whose husband is significantly older than her and infirmed. So she has to actually be the protector protector of the home. And she couldn't operate the Glock. She couldn't operate a regular trigger on something. And I went out and made sure I bought that so no one like her. And I got the SR-22 because it's easy to rack. But it's still a 22. And I just thought about this woman trying to shoot someone who only took one or two, one class for me. Right. And I don't think a 22 would be good, but a 380 would be better. So that's probably on my future list to buy just because of this doctor. Yeah. And, and another, from, another right. lady. from the training aspect, I completely understand you know you're gonna get people like that, so yeah, it's great. But I'm gonna I'm gonna move us back into the yeah. We gotta get that soundtrack, guys. Yeah. Sorry, guys. <laughs> no, that's okay. We've been recording uh, for an hour and a half already. Wow. Well, I got an hour and twenty four minutes, man. <laughs> uh, next one is also from iTunes. It says, "Great show, five stars from John W six nine six four. I really enjoy the show. I feel you guys do a good job with your unbiased reviews." Chad sounds so familiar. I can't figure out why I have no idea who this is. Great show guys. <laughs> no hate from me. So we thank nice. you for that. Uh, and I don't know why I sound familiar, but you know, you can always send us email and I know why. <laughs> that's Rosie the river. That's, that's the river son. Oh, <laughs> that prom night. That freaky deaky with the prom night. Okay. Well, that explains it. Okay, Tony. 
Second is for everyone diversity shoot. Second is for everyone diversity shoot. I want to go ahead and get this out there first. I got the rally shirts. If you guys follow me on Instagram or any of the social medias, you saw the rally shirt. The rally shirt has the 2A4E diversity shoot logo, and underneath it says gun control equals racism. Um, go to Second is for Everyone Facebook page if you want to see the speech that I did about gun control equals racism. These shirts are ten dollars. I don't get a freaking dime of it, but I think it's 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 great that we roll into these rallies in one color um, because it looks like it's a truckload of us. It was really cool walking down the sidewalk and I had a lot of people whom I didn't even know had these rally shirts on. The guy ships them in two to three days. Uh, excuse me, four days. Four days at the longest. So four days before an event, make sure if you're cutting it close. I'm going to be at the April 30th Harrisburg, Pennsylvania rally. They have a rally every year. I'm going to be there. If you guys want to rock one of these shirts, order your shirt now. He has shirts set aside um, to be printed if you guys order it. Again, it's 10 bucks. I don't get anything from it. I just think it's important to Second Amendment people, and I've mailed these all, uh, he's mailed these all over the country. And people have hit me up on Instagram and Facebook and said, hey, I ordered mine. So order them. It starts a conversation where no one can deny that conversation started. Uh, gun control started as, as a, race, a 400 year racist strategy. Started in Virginia, 1620. First gun control law in this side of the country of what was America was black people can't own guns. So my thing is this. Help out if you can. Go to diversityshoot.com. You can donate to our GoFundMe. You can go to our Patreon and donate there. Um, any help you can give me is great. I'm trying to get to Louisville. I'm trying to buy an iPad. I'm trying to get a laptop. If you can help us out with those expenses, because it would help out a lot. We're coming up with different locations, and we're coming up with really cool stuff we're trying to do this year. Again, follow me on Instagram at Simon Says Train, Simon Says Train on Facebook, and the second is for everyone on uh, Facebook. And you'll see all the cool stuff we have coming up. I really appreciate coming on every week. I say it every week, and I mean it every week. Um, thanks, guys, for having me on. Hey, we oh. enjoy it. And we and, say that every week, too. But, yes, <laughs> we really enjoy having you on. And that's why we let you spout your your good <laughs> stuff. Because, you know, you don't see me doing diversity shoots. That's you. You know, hey, you, listen, can bring, you can bring them to Oregon, though. I'm okay with that. Yeah, it's a long road trip, dude. I'm trying to figure out how the heck I'm going to drive to Louisville. But <laughs> um, I think it's important for us. Look, I, I may move to Pennsylvania one day, but I'm never going to stop across border raids into New Jersey. I don't care if I have to do the lever action and revolver diversity shoot in New Jersey and do belt-fed machine gun and suppressor diversity shoot in PA. Um, it's important to keep growing a community wherever you are. And if you don't have anyone to grow the community with, you know what I mean? If you live out in the middle of nowhere, donate to diversityshoot.com. Donate to uh, a Second Amendment group in your in your state because this is where the fight's going to be fought this year. Trump's the president. We got Republican majority in both houses. Doesn't mean anything because they'll turn on the drop of a hat. <laughs> yeah. But they're attacking us one at a time on the state level. This is where you have to donate. This is where you got to fight. And one more thing. Uh, a lot of people say vote in November, vote in November. The freaking primaries in June. Vote in June so they don't even get to the November election. People who violate your rights, just vote them right out if they have someone running against them. Just let them know it's not a buy. If they vote against you, you call them up and go, hey. There's another guy running for a Republican. I don't care if you've been there 20 years. You've let me down. And, and Joe Bob's a blank, blank veteran and a da, 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 da. So what? No one knows his name. He hasn't screwed me over yet. I'm not voting for you in the primary. Less people vote in the primary. You want heat felt? Show up at the primary. I worked a primary in a town with 569 people. 25 voted in the primary. I'm telling you. If you want to make a move as a Second Amendment advocate, get your people together and do a group vote and vote somebody, and you can actually swing elections before the main election in November. Sweet. Well, finally, it's time to wrap this thing up. <laughs> Send questions or comments or feedback to gungearreview at gmail.com. Remember to subscribe and leave us an iTunes review. 
Check out all the other shows on the Firearms Radio Network at firearmsradio.tv. Be sure to visit the Firearms Insider for reviews and industry coverage. Check out uh, us on Facebook at Facebook slash Firearms Insider. Follow us at Firearms Insider on Instagram. And thank you for listening to the largest pound for pound podcast on the network. And we are out. Bye, Felicia. <laughs>